Welcome to our presentation, The Future of Online Learning, Considering the Importance of Learner Voice and the Role of the Learning Experience Assistant. My colleagues and I will be presenting on our lear online learning experience as graduate students and recent graduates, as well as our unique experience working for the University of Toronto Scarborough's Digital Learning Producer Program. My name is Athena Tassis and I am a Learning Experience Assistant at the University of Toronto Scarborough and a Research Assistant with the Centre for Teaching and Learning. I am also a recent OISE Master of Teaching graduate with a passion for creating supportive and engaging online learning experiences for students. Hi everyone, my name is Matt Humphreys and I'm also a Learning Experience Assistant at the University of Toronto Scarborough. I've just started my second year in OISE's Master of Teaching program. Uh, Game-based learning is my research area, and I also have a personal and professional interest in educational technology. Hello, I'm Jenna Molnarek, and I'm also a Learning Experience Assistant at UTSC. I'm a recent graduate of the University of Toronto Master of Information program, and my background is in librarianship, with a focus on enhancing library programming and instruction through digital scholarship. A little bit about the Digital Learning Producer Training Program. The DLP is funded by eCampus Ontario's Virtual Learning Strategy and is a joint effort between the University of Toronto Scarborough Library Digital Scholarship Unit and the Centre for Teaching and Learning. Ultimately, the goal of the DLP program is to pair graduate students with faculty in order to enhance and support online delivery of course content. More specifically, we work on integrating the open source applications Open Broadcast Software, or OBS, and OpenShot, while also considering our experience as learners and working towards creating meaningful and engaging content for students. In this presentation, we will discuss a learner's perspective of how the software OBS and OpenShot can be used to build community while prioritizing the well-being of all learners in post-secondary education. We will accomplish this by positioning our conversations around the Community of Inquiry Framework. The Community of Inquiry Framework was first established by Garrison, Anderson and Archer in 2000 and was developed to analyze collaborative constructivist interactions in online, blended and face-to-face -face courses. The purpose of the framework is to create a sense of community, belonging and interaction amongst learners. To get a better understanding, let's take a look at the visual representation of the Community of Inquiry framework. Garrison et al. highlight that in order for deeper and more meaningful learning to take place, these three interdependent elements must be present. Teaching presence, which is the interaction between teacher and learner. Social presence, which is the interaction between learner and learner. And cognitive presence, which is the interaction between learner and the content being presented. All three aspects of the Community of Inquiry framework work interdependently and can influence one another. For example, by having a strong teacher presence, this will help guide and scaffold students. And it will also positively impact cognitive presence as students will be more engaged with the content that's being presented. By integrating OBS and OpenShot to online education, we are able to enhance teaching presence, social presence, and cognitive presence, allowing for a more innovative educational experience. So in the DLP training program, we utilize two software platforms to help implement the Community of Inquiry framework. The first is Open Broadcast Software, which is a free open source software for video recording and live streaming. Utilizing a number of tools such as window and screen capturing and text and media sources, users can create highly customizable scenes that allow you to interact with, arrange, and display assets to move well beyond the capabilities of simply sharing your screen in Zoom. In addition to its ability to live stream content to websites like Twitch and YouTube, OBS's built-in screen recording functionality is incredibly helpful when recording lessons for synchronous or asynchronous viewing and can be used to assist in creating high quality instructional videos. OBS has also been confirmed to be used at many institutions throughout Ontario in combination with virtual cameras, which allows for countless added features to instruction over video conferencing applications like Zoom, Teams, and BB Collaborate. As mentioned, OBS is capable of recording and capturing video and audio, meaning that when paired with post-production software like OpenShot, 
the potential to enhance production value of lecture, conference, and workshop recordings is greatly improved. By using its system functions, such as keyframe animations, layering of images, and basic cutting and splicing, instructors can also create instructional videos that meet the needs of learners. We'll go into some more specifics later, but as learning experience assistants, the pedagogical potential of this software became clear when, we, when my colleagues and I made frequent use of its functions to enhance our professors' learning materials. Lastly, the free and open source nature of the software, in addition to its availability on all major operating systems, ensures that the barrier to access remains low. So how can these software be used to implement the Community of Inquiry framework? Maintaining teaching presence or facilitating instructor interaction with students is a critical element of fostering student engagement in online learning. In an online environment, some instructors may struggle to adapt in-person modes of content delivery and classroom management into strategies and actions that support student learning objectives. Early in the pandemic, my colleagues and I attended synchronous online courses where instructors relied heavily on lecture slides and screen sharing to deliver content, which inadvertently caused us to perceive them as background to their learning materials. We've also participated in asynchronous online courses where a lack of instructor visibility or engagement altogether has left us feeling isolated and in want of guidance and constructive feedback. In an online environment, teaching presence is crucial to providing students with a sense of support and meaningful community. As learning experience assistants, we encourage instructor facilitated approaches that go beyond just having instructors turn on their cameras. Using the functions of OBS and OpenShot, we help create natural opportunities for teacher-student engagement through instructor-led presentation, conversation, and assessment. For synchronous instruction, we've used OBS to recreate a traditional classroom environment by balancing the display of multiple resources to a screen. For example, we can use both virtual cameras and window displays to create quadrants that equally showcase an instructor, their slides, a whiteboard, and a discussion board. This setup allows instructors to retain equal emphasis between, sharing, uh, between the materials and students, while remaining a fi fixed presence for students to engage with. For asynchronous instruction, we've used OpenShot to record and edit lectures so that instructors remain fixed on the screen, while visuals such as diagrams, videos, and calculations are integrated around them. This method retains the instructor as the focal point on the screen and allows them to insert prompts, activities, or assessments that encourage student interaction through discussion boards or other channels. As Jenna just mentioned, utilizing OBS and OpenShot system functions are essential in building teacher presence, and this same principle applies to social presence as well. According to Saad et al., students equate online courses and learning with a lower quality of teaching, ineffective instructors, and poorer quality materials. From our own and our peers' experiences during the pandemic, we've noted that many of our professors use simplistic, unengaging PowerPoint slides to guide their lectures, which diminishes the capacity for peer-to-peer -peer social presence. Unfamiliar perhaps with online learning spaces and teaching practices, some educators we encountered in our online courses seem to struggle in knowing how to adapt their content and methods to this new environment. This is in part reinforced by the perception that the potential for building social presence and community through distance learning is limited. If instructors are unaware of the tools that are out there or how to use them, learning material can remain stuck within the substitution or augmentation levels of the SAMR model. However, by designing materials in ways that are higher up on the SAMR scale, instructors will correspondingly better support the social presence within the community of inquiry framework. Ideally, educators should strive to reach the redefinition stage of the model in which pedagogy is infused with technology such that it allows for the creation of new tasks that were previously inconceivable. By using OBS and OpenShot, educators can reach this redefinition level of content delivery and enhance the social presence or peer-to-peer -peer interaction of their students. For example, the professor I was paired with as part of the DLP program implemented a system in her 300 plus student lectures that uses the window capture function to display the Zoom chat and participants' emoji reactions on screen. Because her classes were so dependent on discussion and participation, keeping the chat visible on screen became an essential component of her content delivery, as student-to-student -student interaction was more immediately facilitated. 
This was also crucial in extending the social presence to students who were unable to attend the lecture live. Despite not attending the lecture as it happened, because lectures were recorded with the chat box visible, asynchronous learners were able to essentially simulate the sensation of community interaction by keeping up with the conversation unfolding in the chat box. Interestingly, this brings to mind the chat box on twitch.tv, which is the website where OBS is primarily used. This is just one of many possibilities, as the extensive set of tools within OBS means the potential for social presence is limited only by one's creativity. In harnessing these kinds of tools, educators and educational institutions can begin addressing the sentiment that online learning is of a lesser value than traditional classrooms. Building from our previous section, another contributing factor to the perception of online learning being unengaging or ineffective is potentially due to the way that ideas and information are being communicated by instructors. For example, in some cases, learning materials are designed and delivered in a way that fail to reinforce or clarify the concepts and ideas being presented. As a result, students may disengage. From our experience as students, we've also had professors stick to only using their PowerPoint slides or adopting a sage on the stage teaching technique, making interaction between teacher, learner, and content quite dry. The static nature of the PowerPoint slide or the talking head content delivery methods mean that students disengage either out of boredom or because nothing is really being done to support a learner's sensory memory which is crucial to their cognitive presence. As learning experience assistants, we've had hands-on experience ensuring students' cognitive presence is maintained by enhancing the learning materials that, that University of Toronto professors provide us with. Although this can be done with OBS as well, I'll briefly discuss here how supporting cognitive presence is accomplished through using the application OpenShot. This support can come in many forms, and one of the most helpful functions OpenShot is capable of supporting is creating signaling. According to Ibrahim et al., signaling, or cueing, is an essential component of creating effective instructional videos. By utilizing strategies such as showing two or three keywords of a concept, or changing color contrast and adding of, of assets, or adding symbols such as arrows and circles, Instructors can reduce a student's cognitive load by focusing their attention on a particular area of the screen and thereby a specific concept or piece of information. Signaling can be helpful in introducing new material and building connections between various concepts. The manner in which content is presented also plays an important role in supporting cognitive presence. As mentioned previously, OBS also allows individuals to share multiple screens at the same time and customize a variety of layouts when presenting content and information. In contrast to using only one static PowerPoint slide or simply using PowerPoint slides, professors can display multiple display captures or video captures simultaneously while navigating through various customizable screen layout options which in turn will support a student's learning experience. It is, however, important to recognize that there needs to be a balance and not to overwhelm the viewer. Tools such as OBS and OpenShot have the potential to support a learner's cognitive presence when system functions are used appropriately to enhance content delivery and provide a rich learning environment. So it's evident that the pandemic has affected the way we both teach and learn. Through our unique experience as graduate students turned learning experience assistants, we've been able to demonstrate the value in considering learner voice in the efforts to build community while prioritizing the well-being of all learners in post-secondary education. Some of the problems that we as students face during the pandemic in our online classes could be improved using innovative technological tools and applications such as OBS and OpenShot. Additionally, it is important to note that creating an online community that is welcoming to all learners requires intentional planning in online environments. It may not come as naturally as in-person instruction. With that in mind, considering the community of inquiry framework and adapting course content in order to support teaching presence, cognitive presence, and social presence will in turn support student learning in an engaging and meaningful way. What it really comes down to is what your course content is, 
what your course intentions are and creating learner-centered experiences that support all learners and their needs. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today and we hope that you found the content that we presented both meaningful and impactful.